All hour, we're going behind the lens and having revealing conversations that uncover new sides to stars in the spotlight. And stars, they don't come bigger than Whitney Houston. We know Whitney for her legendary talent, record-breaking success, and obviously the things we got to know about her journey, the difficult things. But now, just days before, if you can believe this, the 10th year anniversary of her death, there's a side of Whitney Houston not many of us have seen. The iconic voice, the iconic career, the iconic everything. Whitney Houston was a musical talent who defined a generation, but few of us got a glimpse into her life before she hit the big time. She was a delightful young teenage girl. Photographer Betty Marshall first saw 18-year-old Whitney Houston sing backup for her mother, Sissy, at a concert in 1982. It was a moment she'll never forget. As soon as she finished singing, we just looked at each other and said, that is a superstar. Betty was an instant fan and wanted to capture the budding singer on her incredible journey to stardom. I went up to her dad and said, I'd like to photograph your daughter. And they were delighted because at that point, no one was breaking down her door to take pictures. Betty was first given access to photographs in the Houston family home and formed a very special connection with Whitney. When I first got to her house, she said, hello, Mrs. Marshall. And I said, just please call me Betty. And she said, well, call me Nippy. That's what everyone calls me. Several photos would follow. And now in a new book, Betty Marshall is sharing many of her never before seen pictures and stories from the time she spent with a young Whitney on the verge of stardom. I just wanted to share the nippy I knew with people who loved nippy but didn't know that part of her life. And I hope the book achieves that. Please welcome Betty Marshall to the show. Betty, thank you so much for joining us and sharing these images uh, with the TAM fam. I have to tell you, I am the, I'm the president of Whitney Houston Fan Club. I was just a few blocks from this studio when my friend called to tell me that she passed away. And looking at these photos, I cried, but then I smiled. Because to your point, I felt like I was looking at Nippy. Never met her, never got a chance to interview her. But this is, this is Nippy in, this, in these photographs here. Well, I'm so thrilled that you saw the Nippy that I was happy to share. It's, such, it's a sad time right now just to remember the girl we all knew and loved, but uh, I'm so happy to share my pictures and stories, and I'm glad you're a big Nippy fan. <laughs> That's all the I can The timing of this to decide to share them, it's almost 10 years. She would have been 58 um, years old. The timing for you in revealing many of these photographs that have never been seen before, what was that process like for you emotionally? Well, it's, it, I took those pictures actually over 40 years ago, right? I, I started taking pictures of her in 1982 when she was singing backup for her mom. In the so, you talk about in the photos, I'm holding up one now with um, Sissy Houston and Whitney. You said you knew she wasn't going to be a backup singer forever. Um, that was the caption along one side of the photo. How did you know that? What was it about being in the room with her that made you know she was not going to be a backup singer forever? Well, the first time I saw her, of course, is when she was introduced by her mom at uh, Sweetwater's, a club in New York, uh, a small club in New York. And Sissy just said, one of my backup singers is going to sing a song. <laughs> and this beautiful young girl stepped forward and sang Tomorrow from Annie with all the gospel embellishments that only the Whitney we all knew uh, could do. And my husband and I just looked at each other and said, that is a superstar. Mm. So... <laughs> um, I think I knew right from the beginning that she was going to be special, but I never dreamed that she would become the icon she has become. In one, Nor, of, the, in one of the photos um, with her bare shoulder that we showed with her smiling, you wrote, as I look at the photos now, especially the bare shoulder shot, I do see an emergence from a cocoon. The butterfly is peeking out. That's what you wrote about that. The butterfly was peeking out. Elaborate on that, what you saw. 
Well, when I first met her at home, she was just a typical teenage girl, um, you know, in a T-shirt and blue jeans and uh, totally comfortable in front of the camera. Then uh, a little while later, I did uh, some studio pictures of her and with various tops and looks. And then the bare shoulders mm. emerged. Mm. And it was a breathtaking moment. Betty, where were these photos stored all these years, 40 years? Basically in a box in my closet. <laughs> However, um, sadly, the night I heard the news that she had passed away, uh, which is, of course, a devastating moment, and I didn't know quite what to do, but I realized that I had a box a few feet away of negatives and chromes that I was saving along with a lot of other film I've shot over the years. Mm. And so I got out the pictures and started to look, and I said, well, someone might be interested in those pictures. A couple of them had run earlier on a TV interview that Whitney had done with Diane Sawyer, for one. There were a few of the photos that she ran that came through my photo agency. But uh, I said, what do I do with these? And uh, how do I start calling magazines or papers and saying I have some pictures? Mm -hmm. So instead, I, I realized that Getty Images um, had the resources you know, to get the pictures out there. So I called them and uh, um, said, I've got these pictures. And it was right. like, oh, sure, come on, you know. And then uh, you send, show them, and there send, are these incredible images. I want to get to this final photo shoot you did with Whitney, 1986, at the video shoot for her hit, Greatest Love of All. Um, the full, you know, transition, as you put it, with the cocoon, the butterfly emerges there, and that's when, as you put it, Whitney became the superstar. When you see that picture, what do you feel now, all these years? Well, at the moment, I think I feel a little sadness, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the moment of thinking about it. I saw the fulfillment of what we had all dreamed would happen. Mm -hmm. And funnily enough, at an earlier audition, Whitney was chatting about the kind of house she would have when she was a star. Wow. Wow. And not three years later, um, I was invited out to see that house, not with a camera, by the way. <laughs> and uh, so this was the fulfillment of the promise. Yeah. But now my unique vision of her was a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. Now she, she was taken over by the world. Yeah. And uh, I moved on to uh, other people and other photo shoots, but she's always special in yeah. my heart. And mm -hmm. I think to the hearts of those who never had the opportunity to meet her as you did. My favorite is this, this uh, photo of her with her mother, and it's just pure joy. It's one of many images in Betty Marshall's book, Young Whitney. Betty, thank you so much for sharing these images. It is available now, and you can get a digital copy or this hard copy version exclusively from the Grammy Museum store.